Okay, so Dylan and I are presenting a survey paper at Eurobiz. They have different kinds of papers, short papers, full papers, survey papers. The survey paper slot is roughly 45 minutes. We have divided it into two, and I'm gonna try to go for 20 minutes. That's my, my target. <clears throat> So I guess we'll start. So welcome to the survey on information visualization books. My name is Bob Laramie and I will give the first half of the talk while Dylan Reese will give the second half of the talk. So it's divided into two parts. The first part is a general introduction and motivation. We'll talk about some of the special challenges associated with trying to conduct a survey of books, which is very unusual. We'll talk a little bit about the cost, because it's a more expensive survey than average. The search methodology we used to find books the scope, what's in, in the survey, what's not in there, the classification of the books, and then we'll go into some actual examples of some of the books that we talk about. And then we'll break for part two, and Dylan will take over for part, starting on part two. Oh, this is not the, the version, so no, no. Like, I have a. I introduced a new slide, right there. I did. Yeah. That's surprising. Is this the actual Google Doc? Yeah. Hmm. Um. Okay. No, maybe. No, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's I got good. confused because I'm looking at this. Oh yeah. And not this. Apologies. That's okay. It's a good, it's good thing. Good thing. It's a practice. Talk. <laughs> so the real question is, why would we do this? That's the, the big question. I have never seen a survey of visualization books or anything similar like that. A traditional survey is a survey of research papers. And so the question is really, why did we do a survey of books? Well, Dylan's PhD focus is on the visualization of call center data. So some good candidate surveys would be something like visualization of time series data, perhaps, but that's already been done. Visualization of time-oriented data has already been done as a survey and published as a book. Visualization of Event sequences is already been published as a survey at Eurovis. Those are all good topics for Dylan, to support Dylan's thesis. Another good topic could have been visualization of business data or industry facing data, but those surveys have also been published as well. Those kind of classic. And then there have been so many surveys published that it makes sense to publish a survey of surveys <laughs> in information visualization, but that's already been done too. <laughs> so we thought, uh, somehow we thought it would be a great idea to do a survey of information visualization books, since it, ha it is something new and we thought that it would be a valuable contribution to both Dylan's thesis and the visualization community. And it just happens that I have already existing a large collection of books because I like them so much. And Dylan had funding to support the purchase of more books. So we thought, let's give it a try. <coughs> that's, that's basically the idea. This is a graph that shows the publications of, of information and visual analytic books over years, over the years, starting with Bertin. And you can see starting in, the, there's not much activity until around 2004 when there's this ex essentially like an explosion of books starting in 2004. And in fact, if, if we were to extrapolate 
this graph, it would be much higher in the current years. So 2018 and 2019 have lots of new books coming out. So it's, it's a really um, ex explosive area right now. And it's, it's great to have a resource that provides somebody with an overview of all the books so that they don't need to actually buy them, buy them all. They try to choose them. And the books offer some advantages. So the books offer some advantages in the sense that they're not limited to a number of pages on a certain topic. So there's no hard limit of, say, eight pages on any given topic. So the books often go into more, they certainly go into more breadth than typical research papers. And a lot of them go into more depth. Another thing that I think is good to mention is the massive amount of investment in time and in, in labor into books that I think we don't fully appreciate and utilize. So people generally spend some years of their lives working very, very hard on these, these very high quality books. For example, Alfred Inselberg told me he took five years to finally publish his parallel coordinates book. And it has something like 400 figures. And Hannon Samet, who published his Spatial Data Structures book, he said he worked on it for 10 years. That's what he told me. It's a it's very, very serious effort. And if you ever look at the books, you'll see, oh wow, like they are serious efforts. So this was the slide that I was thought I had that I thought I missed. So this is the first survey of its kind that we know about in terms of books, and certainly in the visualization community. And it features a novel two-level classification by readership audience on one dimension and subject area on another dimension. The subject area is actually hierarchical, so it's 2D hierarchical classification. <laughs> and we also provide book recommendations on each of one of these books, and we have lots of collected, lots of valuable metadata that offers comparisons between the books and how they how they can compare to each other and what they features they have and what features they don't have. So there are some special challenges with writing a survey on books, searching for them. So it requires a different search process than a standard survey on visualization or research papers. Cost is certainly a factor. Some of the books really require that you purchase them. <laughs> and so we spent a lot of money, we invested a lot of money over many years actually, I don't know exactly how many years, but I would say at least 10 years. Pro probably around 10 years worth of investing, buying books, a lot of books. And of course, volume is one of the major challenges. So, this would be a perfect <coughs> time to mention the number of pages covered in the survey. But I don't think I wrote that in there. Which slide is this? Slide five. So the number of pages that we talk, we cover is, I believe, at least ten thousand. If we add up all the books and all the pages, it's it's certainly in the thousands, which is higher than a, a normal survey paper. So a little bit about costs. So on the x-axis are each of the books that we talk about and their costs in US dollars approximately at the time of writing this survey and using Amazon.com prices, generally speaking. And they're broken up into different publishers. So for example, Graphics Press, where you see all the Tufty books, the classic Tufty books. And then some others like Princeton Architect Architectural and so on. CRC is something that everybody's very familiar with. And 
but it's interesting to see that Springer has, on average, the most expensive books. Hmm. Some with that are extremely expensive. And the AMS T11. I should find out what that one is. Slide six. AMST 11. Excuse me? Uh, I'm not sure it's a spelling mistake. Uh, no? This one? Z, yeah. That looks like an accent to me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I see that. But it would be good it would be good to know what that that really expensive one is actually. Isn't that your but geography one? No, geospatial. I don't think no, there's. There are two that that I have. One's two hundred dollars, so it's not featured here, and another one's two hundred and fifty. Mm. Oh, but they're not. They're actually not in this mm. survey. That fall outside the scope of the survey. <clears throat> I cannot remember what the AMST eleven is, and. So the total, we invested over $3,000 into the survey, which is very unusual. It's, it's unusual to invest that kind of money. <clears throat> so for the search process, it's not the same as simply going to the IEEE Explore Library or the VCM <coughs> Computing Library, Digital Libraries, and looking for titles. It's not the standard visualization venues, the IEEE VIS conference and things like that. So we looked at online bookstores like Amazon, a few different versions of Amazon, John Smith, Waterstones, Blackwell, Wordery.com, and we looked also at publisher websites directly like CRC Press, Springer, John Wiley, and, and other publisher websites. As a noble system. <laughs> so the scope was a long continuous discussion what books should be included in the survey and what were not included in the survey and this was a this was a discussion that really took at least 6 months I would say probably closer to a year to figure out what goes in and what goes out because if we included too much, it quickly came, became out of control, we couldn't manage it. <clears throat> so for example, we originally, in our original idea, we included edited volumes. But as it progressed, we realized there were too many edited volumes that it became un unmanageable. And the same with GIS. I think in the original scope, we wanted to include <coughs> GIS, but we, we discovered there are too many GIS um, books to include. And I think we already knew infographics we couldn't include. I think we knew that right from the beginning because there are hundreds of infographics books. And of course, SciViz is not included because it's a focus on information visualization and visual analytics. Tools books are mentioned, but there are hundreds of tools books on things like Excel. Even D3 alone has, I think, over 50 books. So that is, we provide links or references to the most recent editions of some of the tools, the most recent versions. And we do have a section dedicated to this, but this is not the main focus. The main focus is information visualization books and visual analytics books that are not edited volumes that are written by only a few authors, dedicated authors. And they're classified in two dimensions in a matrix. One of the dimensions is the target reading audience. So we picked up every single book and looked at the, what the target reading audience is, and they generally fall into these six categories. One category is special, it's those ones we call classics, all the books that were published essentially before data visualization became popular. You know, the ones like Tufty books and Vatan books, 
in the Cleveland books. Then we have general audience category, which is books that can be picked up and read by essentially anybody. You don't need a background in computer science or anything like that. You can just pick up these books and start looking at them, like the Book of Trees. Of course, these books are more, even more interesting if you already have a background in database, but the background in database is not required. We have a category of academic textbooks. So those are for people really that are studying the topic of database. And they're usually university-oriented books like for undergraduates or, or graduates in computer science. Then we have a category of industry professional. So these books are especially targeted at people that are working full time and are, are developing their careers but are not necessarily computer scientists. They could be in business, they could be in journalism or, some, or something like that. Then we have special focus. We have a group of special focus topics. For example, time, there's a special book that's dedicated only to time-oriented, or two, at least two books focusing only on time-oriented data visualization or multivariate visualization and so on. And then we have a category of tools that just highlights some of the recent books published on special topics like OpenGL or D3 and so on. Um, can I ask a question? Maybe I yeah. missed the point. Yeah. So you said that you didn't include any book related, like explaining a tool like D3. But you said here your audience is interested in like OpenGL. I didn't get the point here. Yep, so we tried to find a compromise essentially. Mm -hmm. We realized we can't actually include all tools, like a survey of tools. Even a survey of tools would be too, too broad. Yes. So we tried to find a compromise and just say, okay, let's mention some of the tools available. We'll have a section where we mention some tools and then provide references to sort of the most recent books if, if for people that are interested. So some people might pick up the survey and hope to get some advice on tools. And so it was sort of a compromise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can probably read a survey of tools. Excuse me? You can probably write a survey of these tools. A survey tools. of these tools would be too broad, actually. It would a have to... A survey of web visualization tools. Yep, it would have to be subdivided probably, mm. probably into different Between categories. Between three, four player, uh, all that stuff, you'll probably have a survey there. Maybe. Or it's, it's, it would have to be very carefully, you know, carefully uh, managed, <laughs> let's just say that. Or I think anything. tools, viz tools, it would have to be very carefully managed. Because there are lots of books on viz tools. Like, you could do a survey on D3 books only. That would be possible, I believe. Yeah. But it might, it might be possible to do a survey of tools if you really confine the publication year to say, like, okay, we're going to focus on all the books that are published in the last five years only. You know, that, that yeah, could be a possibility. Yeah, if you include something like Excel, though, you will have hundreds just in the last yeah, five years. Yeah, exactly. Just that. Exactly. <coughs> exactly. Yeah. So we have two, two dimensions to the classification. One is based on topic. So every book has an introduction chapter, right? So it makes sense to have that as a topic, sort of introduction to data visualization, introductory topics. And a lot of books feature a chapter on data analysis, a lot feature on mapping data, visualization techniques, rendering, and interaction, perception. And you might recognize this. This resembles the Viz pipeline. So it's, it's very similar to the Viz pipeline. And that's one dimension <coughs> of, the, of the classification. This is an overview of the classification. This is the essentially the heart. It would be fun if it was beating like a. <laughs> <laughs> it's red. <laughs> it, 
this is essentially the heart of the survey. So it features all the books on the y-axis, the focus books, let's say. And then they're divided by their readership audience. And then the, the subject categories are subdivided roughly according to the visualization pipeline in a hierarchical sense. So like the introduction is divided into foundations, pipelines, and visualization history. And data analysis is subdivided into further subdivisions. And then where content is dedicated to a certain topic, the number, the approximate number of pages is written there. Hello. So for example, in this book, 179, approximately 179 pages are dedicated to the topic of visualization design. And some books stick out, right? So like you see, and th th there's a color map as well. So the darker the red is, the more pages there are dedicated to a special topic. And some of them stick out. And where there are no pages dedicated to a topic, the, the, the cell is blank. Right? So information theory, you know, there's a one book that really sticks out dedicated to information theory and visualization as it applies to information theory. And so on. Yeah. This is a very helpful overview if you're trying to get an overview of all the subject material and searching for us a book that covers a special topic. Okay, and the books are the books are in sections based on audience classification, readership audience classification, and essentially chapters. Each chapter is summarized in two sentences. And there's a there's a, a, a well-defined structure to these summaries. Actually, you can look at the summaries and then know exactly where you are in the book. For example, I know that this is a summary of chapters one and two. And then between every other chapter summary, we indent the paragraph. So we know this is chapters one and two, this is chapters three and four, this is chapters five and six, and you can even see sometimes the word fifth. So you can really find out where you are. You never, you're never lost in this survey. And then at the end of each, each summary, well every, every summary is accompanied with a thumbnail of the book cover, and then we compare books with each other and make recommendations of books at the end of each section. So here's the section on classic books, for example. <coughs> So the Bear Turner book is extremely useful. It's, it's, ba it's kind of a, a required book on everybody's bookshelf if you're really uh, a visualization scientist. So it's really the first book in some ways on this topic. And it, it's g very good for historical overview. And then the Tufty books are very good for the general audience, you don't need a computer science background for the Tufty books. They're very educational and entertaining, and there's less of a focus on the interaction, so interaction is a more recent focus. Right? And the Cleveland books are written, Cleveland was a statistician, so they're written from a statistician's point of view, a statistician's lens on information visualization. And then we have some general audience books that are, these are extremely engaging. I would say the characteristics of these books are the highest, in some ways, the highest engagement. They really attract your attention based on what, what you see, the visualizations that you see. Um, for example, the, the Book of Trees and the, the Book of Circles. There are ex, you know, hundreds of great, great examples are collected in these books for everybody that wants a quick introduction to the topic. Good. I think I only went a few minutes over, which is pretty good. Do we do question at the end or each part? 
I would say we'll do questions at the end, unless you have like an urgent question. No, no, no. It's just whether you wanted to split yeah. it in two or just do it all at the end. I think um, you know you might have a question that I might cover basically. Yeah, so right. it's better to have it at the end, I think. And cool, cool. Yeah. Or oh, we can just interrupt. I just don't want to take all of Dylan's time away. That's all. I, I don't really Fair enough. No, I'm happy. Dylan wants that. <laughs> he loves the camera, look at him. So photogenic. <laughs> this one, extra space. Book recommendation. Yeah, yeah. there's a space. Yes, extra right. space in front. Oh, oh yeah. Cool. Look at my half of things I can. Those are the things that are easy to miss. Uh, are you happy with the um, with the content there and everything? Then? Do you think yeah, it's I just put two notes. I need to put in the number of pages. Yeah. And okay. I need to find out the AMP T11 book. AM that the most expensive. AMP. ASMT. AMST. I checked the book. It is. It is um, visualization of time oriented data. Oh, right, I forgot about that. Yes, I know that one. Time oriented. It's really yeah. well, isn't it? Um, okay. Um, you might as well start the second part then. Um, I'm Dylan Reese, I'm here to present the second part of it, which mainly revolves around the, uh, the metadata about the books. And again, some of the um, book recommendations from some of the other sections. Um, so we'll start though, we're going to point out that we have a web resource with the survey as well. Um, it's based on surveys by um, Beck et al. Um, basically, it just compiles all the books that we cover in the, uh, in the survey um, in their classification as well. And just details about them, has all the images in them as well, so it's, it's just useful to have a a quick jump to to find it basically. And it can be found at thisbooks.swansea.ac.uk. Uh, yeah, so I recommend you check that out. Um, so into some more recommendations. So um, on the academic textbook section, uh, we can see that we've got eight books basically we put in this section. So this is a section, it's fairly detailed though, it's, um, it gives a lot of background as well, so that students go into visualization they can learn about the background of it, where it comes from, and things like that. Um, and they do get quite technical, some of them, especially um, uh, Colin Weir's book on perception. Um, is very technical and it's very good for perception issues, basically. I think that's the go-to book for um, anything perception-related. And even now, I think it's still all quite relevant. Um, I think only more recently, there can be papers published that might kind of update on that. Um, other books then is the book by Ward and his colleagues. Um, that's a very uh, good book for uh, a PhD student in uh, information visualization. It's very, um, uh, it's very detailed. Um, lots of other covers, lots of subjects. So a highly recommended book. Um, another well, we don't, another one we recommend then is uh, the Munza book, which is uh, Why is it easy to read kind of educational um, book. Um, the other books there, the, the Spence book and the Bill Fester and the five design sheets, they kind of tend to rely on more of like how to create a visualization really, like a process of going through and designing, um, looking at your data, seeing what kind of designs would fit and kind of um, iterating on that to bring out a final uh, visualization design that you might want to show. Um, industry professional books. Um, these we differ from the uh, academic books. They're more aimed towards industry professionals. They cover less of the background about things, basically. Um, there's seven books here that we identified. Um, just some highlights we've got here. We've got the um, Show Me the Numbers by uh, uh, Stephen Feu. Um, it provides quite a detailed description of um, visualization again, but more towards professionals really rather than students. Um, the Storytelling with Data by Knaflik. I can't I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, it's a quite a well received book. Um, it's obviously on, focuses on presentation and storytelling. 
um, which you don't really get in any of the academic based books. So that's quite an interesting book. And we can see later in some of the metadata that that book stands out um, above some of the others. Uh, and then just another book here, we've got uh, Making Data Visual by Fisher Meyer. Uh, it's quite an easy and formal style. Um, it's just for basically people who come in and perhaps have to be asked to do some data visualization and it's like a good book for somebody just to pick it up and to show a graph to like the boss or something like that. Um, the specialized books then. So in the specialized books we have 11 books. Um, these tend to be more detailed. Um, very specialised books, so you almost need to be studying that specific topic to get much out of these books in reality. Um, there are some extra ones in here, so like Illuminating the Path there is a classic uh, visual analytics book. Um, it, well, I think that classics, we said, were over 20 years old, so that didn't quite make it into the classics, but it is in reality a classics book. Um, very technical book though, so it's not for a general audience in any way, shape or form. Um, I think I was struggling to understand large parts of it. Um, and then uh, the colour book is another interesting one, that's perhaps something that could be to a wider audience um, or even to students, it's quite good for explaining um, what colours do you go together and things like that. Um, so it's probably recommended, it could almost be an academic book in some respects for people who want to make things more aesthetically pleasing. Um, there's not many other recommendations or comparisons we made between them because they're all different uh, books really, so it's more a case of uh, horses for courses onto which book um, suits your needs best. Um, moving on then, so some metadata. So this is what we call our graph of influence. So um, we've uh, taken basically the number of Google citations on the y-axis versus the Amazon sales rank on the x-axis. It's a logarithmic scale on the x-axis, so um, you can imagine it going up. That's a lot, a lot more than, a lot bigger than that. Um, and obviously, the lower the sales rank, so the number one selling book is going to be at the bottom. So it's a uh, almost like a inverse scale as well. You can think of it like that. So the interesting ones here, obviously, the ones that stand out. We've got the Tufty book up here, so the original um, Semiological Geographics by Tufty. We can see it's been cited over, I think this is slightly outdated now, I think it's over 12,000 citations on that book now. Um, and you can see it's selling as well within the ten, top 10,000 books on Amazon. So obviously it's quite a influential book, you know, lots of people buying it and it's being cited, cited a lot. So obviously a very influential book. We can uh, kind of compare that to perhaps, um, well, we've got the three Tufty books here, which are all fairly in the same similar region, which is quite interesting. Now um, we can compare that to um, the Colin Weir book on perception. <coughs> this uh, on the sales rank is a lot lower, we can see, but the citation rank is the third most cited book, so it's quite an interesting, uh, quite interesting note. And the other I'll stand out here is the Naflik book, the storytelling book that we mentioned earlier. Here we can see that it's not as very poorly cited, I think. Um, it had less than 100 citations, I think, um, when I checked this morning. But it sells, it's the best selling book of the whole lot here. Um, kind of almost goes to show like maybe a difference between the general audience and academia who are more likely to be citing books. Um, and also, it, it's, it's a storytelling, well, it covers storytelling. Maybe that's something that's um, missing within the um, visualization community, really. That the general populace more want to see, or business people more want to see more of really. Um, the books we have here then that were well cited, they all t tend to be educational, so we've got the Cleveland Statistics book. It's worth mentioning as well that these books, the Tufty ones, are slightly older than the Netflix book, so it's had more time to get citations. Uh, the Bertan book is right here mm -hmm. in the middle. Um, We've got the Cleveland book here as well, and then we have a Spence um, book here, and CTO5 is... Oh, it's the um, uh, Illuminating the Path. Um, so it's, it's an old book, again, and it's had time, and it's, it's in the visual analytics field, it's very uh, it's pioneering, so not uh, from a day, basically. 
Um, just some more numerical analysis from the box. So here we have a, a bar chart with the box along the bottom, and just a number of figures, pages, and reference. So references in green, pages in red, and uh, figures in blue. So right at the bottom here, we can see um, it's Bertrand's book. It's very high in figures. Um, doesn't reference anything though. Um, I guess he makes a lot of his own figures. Um, and it was the pioneer in the field as well, so there's not much to reference, as it were. Um, so that stands out there. Uh, the book with the most number of pages is the um, the IDV book. You see number of pages, um, which is a very detailed book, really. It's quite a well-recommended book for students. And the book with the most images is the Common Way book, I believe. Most uh, citations, you mean? Oh, most. Oh, most references. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is the Common Way book on perception? Really, I think he references a lot of papers. It's a very uh, academic book, really. Um, references a lot of paper on perception. Gathers all the research together, so uh, it's a very useful book. Um, yeah, there's not too much more in there, I think. <coughs> Uh, next, we just want to touch on some of the supplementary material that we have um, that come with the books. Uh, a lot of these books come with either, well, some of the older ones come with CDs or DVDs or an associated website. Uh, these often are just for um, giving uh, the code base, for example, like a, a few of the books with you know, some sample codes so that you can go and try for yourself. Um, others are videos trying to explain. Um, uh, what they show. Um, you've got a, a kind of like a, an offset between the DVDs or CDs and websites. It's quite interesting. You think, okay, nobody has uses DVDs anymore, um, so I use the website instead. But websites aren't permanent either. I think uh, one that stands out is the, the link with the Illuminating the Path, which doesn't exist anymore. Um, so it's kind of a, an interesting balance to be had between them, really. And with a CD, you can always leave it with a book, and you can always access it in some ways. Um, you know that we used a CD from a book uh, the other the other week, so uh, it's an interesting um, offset. Um, the data sets are also some of the books provide their data sets, which are quite useful if you want to go and create your own uh, visualizations. I think a data set is always a, a, a good thing to have. Uh, next, we want to touch on some Amazon review scores. Um, these have changed slightly from when uh, it was published. I think they've, uh, Amazon have uh, had a bit of a cull of a lot of their um, reviews. I think, unless you were verified purchase, I think there was a lot of cheating going on. So they've kind of changed these uh, a fair bit now. Um, but it gives a, a, a good overview. So again, the um, well, the most review. Oh, so in the y-axis, we have the number of reviews. On the x-axis, we got the scoop the review score, so after you get five stars and it tends to go to a decimal point. Uh, we see they're all kind of like, they're all over two and a half stars, which is always a good thing. But, um, <laughs> the, um, obviously these two, again, stand out with having more reviews than any others. So that's the original Tufty book, the uh, uh, display of quantity information, and the storytelling book by Nathalie again. So that really stands out in these um, metadata, basically without being so popular in the, the academic field. Um, so it goes to tell you about the storytelling, if only there's a storytelling survey. <laughs> um, so yeah, we can see they're, they're quite highly rated, well over four stars, going on five. Um, one of the interesting ones we have down here, so one of the lowest scores, is again the, um, the perception book by uh, Colin Weir. I think it's the lowest score. but. I had a look at some of the scores, and I, it was a bit, I think it was a bit too technical for some. I've got a quote here of one of the reviews, which is way more technical than I was expecting. Anyone want to buy it off me? So it kind of, you know, points out that it's got an audience, and, you know, yeah. it's not necessarily a broad Amazon audience. Um, the higher rated book, so we've got two up here, so I think it's the... Um, uh, Graph-based clustering and a um, visualizing time. Uh, 
you've only got one review and this five star, <laughs> so yeah. I think I think it was cheating a bit really. <laughs> in fact, uh, I'm not sure if they had the reviews anyway. I think Amazon wiped them out. Uh, there's a chance that the, the time oriented people will be in the audience. The time oriented. Um, that's this is visualizing time. This is a uh, Will's book. There's two time books. So mm -hmm. this one is the Graham Will's book. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Uh, yeah. He won't be there. Okay. <laughs> the other guys could be there. The Wolfgang Eigner. Um, the most ex the most expensive. Yes, this is one, is it? No. Mm -hmm. What was it? AMST. Oh, so I, I tell you, the only books that have any scores were placed on there, so I think not all the books are actually on this graph as well. Um, then what else have we got? Uh, so then we just do a little uh, metadata on the, uh, the topics discussed, basically. So the second level of classification we've got along the bottom here are all the topics discussed. And just see how um, the books break down and which topics are covered and which ones aren't. So the one that stands out obviously is visualization design. I mean, this is data visualization. They all talk about the design of the visualization. Um, but I guess the focus one should be the ones that more that don't have many at all. So we're talking presentation and animation. So these aren't covered much in the books at all. I mean, in some respects, it's hard to cover animation in a book because it's static by nature. But it's not discussed either, really, um, as much as the other subjects. And same for presentation. Um, Glyph-based visualization is quite low as well, uh, and spatial data. But then spatial data was in the focus of this um, uh, survey, so we, we can see that. Um, we have the, the bars of colour according to the um, audience that so we got along the bottom here, as we see again. Um, so you can see the visual design is quite balanced between all of them all of the uh, topics, um, but the interesting ones I think are the general audience uh, covered people in visualization and the aesthetics more than anything, so um, general audience books seem to cover the aesthetics with like some of the um, academic books don't really touch on this subject so much, so it's, it's got an interesting um, observation basically. Um, I just quickly mentioned some tools that the um, discussed in the books, so um, each book usually mentions a tool at least, um, some of them really focus on it, so um, this table we have an X if uh, any of the particular books happens to mention that tool, so just in passing, you know, they might recommend this tool for this or something like that. Um, if there's a number there, that means there's detailed instructions on the um, on that tool within that book, um, there's colour code as well, so um, the visualising data by Fry is a uh, processing based book, so you can see it's in red, there's pretty much all of our processing, so 300 pages worth. Um, same for D3, we've got the interactive data visualization by Murray, it has 183 pages. Um, just then, these are our main focus tools, and then we've got some other tools that happen to be mentioned in the books as well. Um, if they mention details about them, they're in bold, otherwise, we just mention passing, they're just um, uh, highlighted. Uh, so it's just to give an idea really of uh, what tools are available and if there was one tool that anyone was specifically interested in they could quickly jump to this table and find which book um, might touch us upon that uh, tool. Uh, I just want to discuss some future work of the survey, so I think we already mentioned uh, in the uh, last thing about the, uh, how we're doing a bit of a survey on tools, so you could probably do a survey in each individual tool. Um, there's so many books out there, like it's really, especially for Excel, where it's just, it's just endless so much amount of books. Um, but also we could do it on the other subjects that we test out. So uh, GIS, there's a lot of books on it, especially the GIS tools. So we've got um, QGIS, uh, QGIS and ArcGIS, these sorts of things as well. Uh, there's a fair few books on infographics as well. They seem to, tend to be more general audience though, so I think we had one the the Campbell's book, and, um, Information is Beautiful, um, the Wall Street Guide is quite a useful infographics one, uh, and Cyvis is the big one that probably could benefit this community the most, I think, would be an uh, information book, um, a survey on uh, science books. As well as that, as there's always new books being published, so if you look this morning, I'm sure there was more uh, candidate books that could go into the survey, but obviously we were trying to go so far, so um, Future work will be then to expand on the survey to include more recent books. And uh, that's what we have to talk about, so thank you for listening.
ask if there are any questions. Few questions. Twenty minutes. Like. <laughs> More luck than judgment. <laughs> so I think we have um, ten minutes for questions in the um, in the session. So it's forty minute presentation and ten minute questions. Um, yeah, I took some notes on a couple of things. Mm -hmm. um, in the motivation, I thought that um, the fact that books are often cited in papers as well, could be a motivation for mm -hmm. this survey. Mm -hmm. yes, as in, yeah. we, you know, they're always present, so might as well have something for them. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing I wanted to mention is that, um, if, can you go at the beginning of the presentation? When you show the first graph on the second page um, about the popularity, um, wouldn't it make sense to have the scope like before showing any data? Because when I was looking at this, mm -hmm. I was wondering, could it just be ebooks or, you know, and the same goes in the scope, do you just do physical copies? I think that would, should be mentioned. Is it just like physical published books or? Books <coughs> tend to be, you know, it tends to be in an ebook and a hardback or softback version of the books anyway. Like there are there are many, especially on tools that are just a digital, you know, yeah, like D three stuff like that. So I was I, when I was looking at the explosion, I was thinking, oh, is it because is it just getting more popular, or is it because it's easier to publish, you know, this kind of stuff? So I'll, yeah, I don't know. It might be a irrelevant. Uh, have thing. to think about it. The reason that is there is because it supports the motivation. It's showing the increase in volume, which is like the kind of one of the main motivations. <coughs> and that's why it's there in the, right at the beginning. We'll have to think about that. I don't know. I don't know what is the up. next slide after this? <clears throat> Yeah, fair enough. It's just, yeah, I thought when, when the scope came out, it clarified a few of the questions I had in the, in the first few slides. I know it's not easy to put it together. Um, one thing that I thought it would be funny to look at would be the inflation on books like from the 60s and stuff like that. It would probably go up quite a bit <laughs> on the cost. Well, the, um, the old book, isn't it, is the, um, it's not on this one, is the um, Illuminating the Past, this visual analytics book. It's out of print now, basically. Oh, wow. It's quite a thin thing, and I think it's, um, that's definitely increased in value, I think, as well. Yeah, even um, if it was like, $10 then, it might be like $100, $159 yeah. or something like that. The prices can be pretty wild. The, they can fluctuate quite a bit. Yeah. 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 I just thought that would be funny to increase yeah. the overall cost. I think they, these were based on books available on Amazon, so they might, I think they do second-hand books as well, don't they, mm. essentially? So yeah. the, this is the Illuminating the Path, you can see it's one of the highest ones there, so I think it's definitely going so up. So did you did you do the prices from Amazon or was it did you just look at the back of the book and no, it's off Amazon. Um, not all of them have the prices in but most of them don't actually. Oh, right. I thought it was the price of purchase rather than the current price. Well, it's a bit of a balance there. I think all right, it's nice. slightly the prices are slightly dictated now though. It's just an indication roughly though. We try we try to be systematic about it and just say, okay, we're going to use Amazon as the price for all of them. Mm -hmm. Like I might have bought a book ten years ago, but we look up the current price on Amazon. All right, so it's current prices. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So they were all done on the same day as well. I checked them just before publication. I went through all of them and so it's on Amazon.co.uk. Then convert to US dollar. No. Dot com. Dot com. Um, the other question I had was when you start talking about the detailed section of the books, so in general, academic, yeah. um, wouldn't the, the specialized book, would those be for academics? Well, yes, it's primarily, because I thought so. To me, I, like, the order is a bit weird, I would have done general, business professional, academic, specialized, or kind of that thing. Cause <coughs> it felt like from the more general to the more specialized, while here is a general, academic, business professional specialized, it was like, it's just a... I, I would say it, it is in that order, 
actually. It's the same as. Uh, uh, wouldn't the business professional be closer to the generalized? I I well, it's it's debatable. It's debatable. Yeah. Like a business professional is a special audience. But it's, it's not so audience. academic, dude. Closer to general. Because when you show the business professional books, like visualizing with data, uh, not showing data, whatever, whatever it was, the O'Reilly, they all <coughs> looked more general than the web book or those things. That would be you. You literally need to be studying this stuff to be interested in those things. Yeah. Like they, they reminded me more of the general general public when you show. Yeah. yeah. So basically, it's a discussion of which goes first, the academic category or the specialized um, no, or the business, 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 business professional. But I, again, mm -hmm. that's not yeah. too relevant, I guess. It was just a... Yeah, it could have gone the other way. It could have been flipped, I think. But it, it makes sense from a readership point of view. Mm -hmm. If you're thinking about your target reading audience, mm -hmm. it, looks like, it looks like a funnel like the, the 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 way it's set up now mm -hmm. like because the the business professional is a smaller readership audience target readership than all let's say all of all university students mm -hmm. you know that that's sort of the logic we used at the time do, do the sales figures back it up like are the uh, academics books sold more than the business professional i don't think so I think the other way around. I think you're probably right. Another way around. It's my No. But I think that's the logic we used at the time, at least. All right. No, I, I was just wondering. I mean, it's just. Uh, but yeah, the content in terms of actual content. Right. It would be interesting to look a little bit more carefully at the contents to see, because. Yeah, I think you are probably right. I think they are, uh, the business books are better selling, so it does make sense. But it's kind of like hard coded in the uh, author I'm, again. Book. I'm just saying whatever came to my yeah. mind. I know that's fair. Do with it what you want. It could. Those two could have been flipped. And yeah. the last thing, um, I thought it would make sense to have the Amazon review score after yes. this graph, just because yeah, Amazon kind of is together. in both. Yeah. Okay. And it just make sense to have a similar graph with a similar component? I don't know, just for me... Yeah, I kind of... Uh, stay a topic up. kind of thing, it would yeah. have made it easier, but... Apart from that, I love it. But these are just things that came up, nothing too important anyway. Yeah. I really enjoyed this part of the presentation with you pointing out like different parts of the graphs and the, the, the outliers and the interesting features. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. It's a really good... Yeah, that was really good. That's why we got these messages. Yeah, but trivia is always interesting. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And I, when you were presenting, I was thinking, "Wow, this is a good survey." <laughs> really, I, 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 like, I'm like, "Damn, you put in a lot of work into this. Like, this is serious business." There's not really stuff we dis did. We discuss it in the paper. I don't think we discussed it as much, perhaps. In the maybe not. Maybe mm. not. I think we just threw it in there and said, "There it is." I think you might have like done one quick. Uh, no, yeah, that's how to look this. I was going through anything. But okay. this is like, it's one of those things that while summarizing surveys, I've noticed as well. And maybe it's because I don't understand the concept fully, but I always thought that a survey would be to try and give you an idea of the field as a starting point or of the topic. And I feel that most of the survey actually go a lot into detail very quickly, some of them don't even have a classification or anything. Well, mm -hmm. I thought the most interesting bit of a survey would be the metadata or the classification, because those give you the idea of the field. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it just seems weird that you go immediately into describing processes mm -hmm. and things like those without even presenting all this data that would be, oh, it's mm -hmm. easier for me to decide whether I'm interested in this field at all from all this stuff that is presenting rather than you do have like um, different versions, different surveys and things like um, Rita Bolger's survey on um, glyphs. on glyphs. That's you might find that like the layout of that is something that kind of looks for insight from the surveys basically. So it doesn't actually classify the books necessarily. It classifies them more about what insights they give you. So like they have a topic and they say okay, which papers can cover this and you know what insights they give and they compare 
what the different papers say and I think that's quite an interesting survey. I think it's worth having a look at that just to get an idea of how yeah, a different yeah. survey works basically and yeah. it's kind of almost like a um, the next level of a survey in some respects I think. Um, that survey is highly cited and, and but I like there's a problem in my opinion with that survey in that it is too broad like that that one I felt like oh my gosh this is a monster that's gonna get out of control very quickly yeah and, and it's quite a long one isn't it? it if I remember correctly but I just thought yeah, I think that, that was a dangerous one because there's a history of glyphs section in there, mm. and that yeah, could yeah. be a book in itself. That's true. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. It is a highly cited survey, actually, and, and it's a great survey, but it's a dangerous one in terms of it's the open, manageability. Mm. It, it, that manageable. one was very difficult to manage, and, and I wouldn't have recommended it. I, I'm actually a co-author. <laughs> is it, is it I wouldn't, <laughs> like I wouldn't have recommended it to a student yeah. because it's too of a it's too much of a monster. Uh, not to write as a student, definitely not. But as, yeah. as I think you know, if you were in the field, I think it's quite good to get an overview of glyphs. So I think, like you're saying, what you want from a survey in some respects um, it highlights what's missing in the fields, not from necessarily. I guess, I guess why you, this is why the a survey survey or this kind of survey help out when with a more focus on mm. the data and keep the field kind of like in a more yeah. overview kind of stage. Mm. Yeah. I also need to say something. Can I just ask quickly, how do you pass that? Uh, I don't know. Netflix, I would say. But I'm not exactly sure. No, no. Netflix. Netflix. <laughs> Netflix. You know, if you say me, you don't uh, pronounce okay. K, yeah. so maybe Netflix. But then, you know, is it English? You know, the name is Cole Nasbaumer. Where is he from? Yeah, yeah is it a he, is it a she? Yeah, no, I think it wasn't yeah. a she, I thought I read. Nafik. 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 According to Siri. Yeah. I thought I read she, she worked at Google or something. Why did you say she? Because if there was a the part of the author, I might be confused, but... I had a feeling she was a she as well. Yeah, I thought she, it was a she and she worked at Google before. And oh, that's good. Okay. So, Sorry. can we go to slides uh, you show yeah, us? Yeah, it's a she. It's a she. Citation number. Yeah. Oh, at Google. Yeah, 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 so, yeah exactly. I mean, what yeah, do she you... mentions it in the Is that one? No. Um, I can't recognize. Oh. Yes, this one. So, your aim to show oh, us... Right. Um, like the, uh, the connection between how uh, how many times this book sailed, like a purchase on Amazon and the number of citation. Mm -hmm. uh, but while I'm looking this graph, I can see only one thing. Like, okay, this book is like top the book is uh, sold less than ten thousand, but it's cited more. It's not the actual sales numbers, it's the sales rank. Oh, rank. rank. Okay. So, like, wow. your number one selling book would be... I, I don't think you can get sales numbers from them. No. no. Amazon do not disclose them. Oh, actually, I have a question. Is this sales rank in a field, or is that general? General. general? general. General. That's pretty impressive, then, in the first 10,000. Okay, but yeah. you know So you're that talking for about five years. Students yeah. has access to books. For example, if I go iFind, I can find many, for many books. And libraries. Like yeah. libraries, like, for free. Yeah. No, you I know? I like your optimism. <laughs> I, I did many times. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you're surprised yeah. how many books yeah. we have in library. Oh, yeah. that's great. It's a huge in Swansea collection. library. Yeah. 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 That's it's, great. it's pretty so, fantastic. It's a kind of I don't know. You overlook uh, the connection. That's true. I, I mention it, but counter to yeah. that, you could say as well that some of these other books they're not going to be bought by libraries necessarily. Yeah. yeah. So the I mean, maybe something also, also you would also but need to. They also to have electronic copies as well, like. Yeah. 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 But you can also say that I, I, I mean, isn't like even a visualization department or course quite rare even in universities? I mean, so not many libraries probably will have the same thing that we have here. Well, those are accessible to anybody who is willing to spend money. Yeah. It, it, you could categorize them into data science, yeah. so they might produce the books. Yeah. Yeah, well. There's no perfect solution to this. This was just 
some idea that we had. Yeah. Just the perspective. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this is mm -hmm. interesting data, basically, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And obviously, libraries probably won't actually even buy them off um, Amazon, or they didn't show they got direct. Yeah, and so another interesting one would probably put the price on X axis, that like, like price per citation for that book. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I found funny was that yesterday there was an article saying Barnes & Noble's stock price is, is an all-time low, even worse than when they launched for the first time. And then you didn't mention that, and I'm like, this poor guy, he's like, we just keep getting... <laughs> That's no, but not so big in the UK though, is it? No, no, but it was just funny because it was one of those things, you know, as soon as you hear it, then you couldn't you hear yeah. it somewhere else and it's like, oh, the stock price is, is abysmal. Oh, they didn't even mention it. <laughs> All right, I guess they're dead. No more. <laughs> You're not relevant. I think Barnes and Nobles, I, if I remember correctly, they had the ingenious idea of combining a cafe with a bookshop. I think they were the first people to yeah. do that. Isn't that like a common thing for bookshops nowadays? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, but they were the first. first but I yeah. think they were the first to, to team up with a... They, they've been like lagging the Starbucks or something like that. Starbucks. Ever since. Starbucks. Well, now we've got Waterstone, which is basically a mm -hmm. cafe with bookshop. And that's what it is. It's a cafe that sells books. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, the the idea, that idea at the time, I thought, wow, they're geniuses, like that's an amazing business idea. Because you grab a book, then you go get a coffee, and then you just you read the book and decide, and probably you read 20 pages, and then you want to buy it, obviously. To everybody. Or you trash your book. You spill the coffee on the book. Yeah. <laughs> or you just read it and have a coffee and then don't it, buy it. It is a, what is it called in business? There is a term for those Third things. space. Huh? It's got a third space. And no, there's another term like, like wastage. Complimentary yes. something. It's like uh, the hot dog stand in front of the stadium, or mm. you know, all these businesses that just naturally complement each other. Like symbiotic services. Kind of, yeah, yeah, kind of a thing like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a, cl a very. I thought it was a very wise rule, but I guess it wasn't enough to save them. But at the time, it was quite. quite they even rule. tried their own Kindle. Yeah, and the, the, the ebook. E they actually just released another one. Yeah, a new one. Yeah, but it's just that the fact that we we, we <coughs> said they tried their own Kindle. Like the name is Kindle, you know. It's like yeah. kind of like the iPhone yeah. was the name of the smartphone for a long time. Yeah, so, it, it yeah. takes a massive effort just to change. Yeah, e or you call it e ink. Yeah, e book. Oh, yeah. E reader. E reader. Yeah, I think the yeah. thing is called e reader, but we just call it a Kindle, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite. Well, no, it's called e reader. Really? It's a brand, no. Kindle is. The de facto yeah. standard. Yeah, so if you have not calculated any Akimbo. Keyboards like making. So, yeah. is it, if for a second paragraph, broad recommend, the singular recommends. No, so is this, that's the book, author, and then it's recommended. Oh, yeah, okay. Author yeah. is a single. The, there's letter. a subject missing. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, yeah, so is this. Uh, Recommended. I mean, yeah, he no, recommends. Yeah. No, no, it's not him that recommends. But I think they're. Or it's just like, oh, this is the author. author. It's they recommend, not not Brad. Who is they? Dylan. Dylan and Bob. Dylan and okay, Bob. We recommend. recommend. There is a mistake there, no, you're right. Yeah, it's not the book recommends the book. Yeah. It's Hi, auto, uh, auto recommends. It would be funny I though. I wrote this book. I like Bob. Everybody recommends their own books. <laughs> I'm not talking about this. If, I, I recommend. if author recommends, author is a single person, he should put S. Yeah, it's, not, it's not the author, it's just. Yeah. Yeah. There is a mistake though. Who's they though? Who's they? <laughs> Alright, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So basically, I think it should be that one. I think there's too, too much text on it. I'm no, I think it's fine. I meant really? this. Yeah. No, it's, it's fine. Good. It's good. Let's go. It's a big fun. <laughs> it's a great. It's a great survey. I, I really like it. I really like. If it. you can add a price per citation, there. Be <laughs> <laughs> Just well, for your we, so we can predict. I think we can predict prices. Oh, yeah. I think it wouldn't change dramatically based on the prices of the books. Good. Like I think you would find that the Springer price per citation would be the highest. That's really? my guess. Really? Yeah, yeah. The tacky yeah. books are not Springer. No, they're um, they're graphic press. They're low yeah. in his own yeah. Yeah, classics yeah. one. So it's 
instead of so zero or two. I think that you wouldn't get very big surprises there. So a lot of these ones, I think, and I know that's a Springer one. Um, we might even exaggerate it. It might even become more extreme, like yeah. if, if it was citation per, per publisher costs. Yeah, interesting. I see what you can do. But you, that is an interesting point in the sense that, yeah, you're, you're trying to get as many citations as possible. Mm -hmm. So, like, who, which publisher got the most citations? Are you that, that would be I mean, when you do a book, aren't you just trying to sell them as much as you can? I mean, tough to want, but. Well, no. It's not necessarily. It's not as, as, as an academic book, he sold well, a lot and. Yeah. He also had a lot of citation, but otherwise, yeah, I would have said Maflin won. Mm. She put a book out, she sold a lot. It depends on what your goal is. Mm. You know, mm. so some people want to make money, some people want to get cited. Yeah. I wonder if they ever like, sell, very, sell at a very cheap price in books. Some of them are really, yeah. like, one quid. Well, I would assume that, that if you, yeah, if yeah, you yeah. wanted to be cited, you would you either do a paper or do. You know, a book seems like a higher barrier to entry for an academic yeah. in, in general. It just this is, doesn't seem like the best avenue yeah. to get citations that way. Um, so uh, some books, people it works sure. very well, you know, like Colin Ware, you know, it worked very well for him. Alfred Inzelberg works very well for him as well. Oh, the same you could say about, um, what's his name, the software engineering book uh, guy, Summerfield. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He got citations yeah. from every student in, in the field, but it's just one seminar book that is like, that is the book of the field hmm. that everybody cites. Mm -hmm. That's the one that they're all told to read and buy as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. which nobody <laughs> buys by everybody cites. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the one in the library they're told to go and yeah. buy. Yeah. Yeah. Same probably with Bjorn Straub's uh, C++. Nobody buys it, everybody cites it. <laughs> Too bad. I bought it. One copy for the whole universe. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, you know, that would even be more fun. The number of citations per book sold. Yeah, oh, yeah. That would be, I, I, I swear. But you, you need to get a sales figure is yeah, value, and you can get it. Yeah. Anyways, I hope this survey is cited. It's got one. <laughs> Be cited. <laughs> Hi, this is a great survey. I, I, I hope that other people appreciate yeah. it. Would you recommend reading it? <laughs> yeah, the nope. only, the only point too much a monster. You only pointed this to me like 15 times in the first three months. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the reading list of the database module, yeah. the SOS and the, the survey of books. You've got an idea what's in it now, isn't it? So I yeah. think the classification table, I think, is probably quite useful. It's one of the most useful. No, no, it's, it's, a great, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good one. It was just that I, I think the first meeting of the PhD was SOS yeah. books. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> SOS. Oops, that's yes. That's, that's, that's your task. Right. Yeah. That's right. Do it. Yeah. Can we do a survey on like these two papers, not books, but papers? You know, papers on visualization tools. Visualization tools. Oh, tools. Uh, tools oh, yeah. Papers. Yeah, not yeah, you books. could actually. Yeah, because there are many, many. Yeah. Papers well, everything that is a framework, so you could probably do that. Uh, maybe. Like even like uh, I mentioned the web thing. I mean that's based on a tool yeah. that they've created. This is Liam says OS, right? Yeah. No. Um, so he used the same. It's a tool basically created yeah. by um, Beck et al. Basically Daniel Key. Yeah. Daniel yeah. Key. Yeah. 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 We can probably do a survey on these tools. Yeah. Not not on books, but papers. But then maybe because maybe. from from these. 2018 and TVCG, I think there are at least 12 of them. The only objection you I would... would need, you need to define tool mm -hmm. the way it is. It's like uh, you, you can. can access your source code and just... The only objection I would have to that... has to be very carefully defined. Is that most tools don't really work aside yeah. from yeah. that yeah. thing shown in the paper. Yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, so a ca careful definition of the word tool. There will be, like, I can only think of a few like maybe Charticulator but would be in that. Charticulator yeah. is, is. Yeah, it would but, be in this. But the process of filtering those not usable tools could be interesting and challenging. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Like you like accessible to the public tools <coughs> could be or web based tools that actually work kind of or are accessible. No, no, yeah. or, or like yeah, I guess is it, isn't isn't survey uh, trying to like tell researchers not to repeat something else's yeah. work. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. if we can, you know, show them here is a list of available publicly accessible tools, mm -hmm. please do not do something similar. Yeah. 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 yeah, that could be interesting. Just check the SOS to make sure it's not published. Because <laughs> 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 I think there, there, there are some surveys that might. Yeah. Might 